television transmissions expand outward from the Earth at the speed of light. And there's a trope in science fiction that aliens have learned everything about humans by watching our television shows. So if you're four light years away, you see the light from the Earth as it looked four years ago. And some of that light includes television transmissions, as radio waves are just another form of electromagnetism. It's all just light. And humans began serious television service in the 1930s. And by the modern era, there were thousands of powerful transmitters pumping out electromagnetic radiation for all to see. So are aliens watching I Love Lucy or footage from World War II and believing it's all a part of our historical documents? Well, the first radio broadcast started in the early 1900s. So at the time that I'm recording this video, it's late 2014. These transmissions have escaped into space 114 years ago. This means that our transmissions have reached a sphere of stars with a radius of 114 light years. Are there other stars in that volume of space? Absolutely. It's estimated there are more than 14,000 stars within 100 light years of Earth, and most of those are tiny red dwarf stars, where there be hundreds of sun like stars. As we're discovering, Almost all of those stars will have planets, many of which will be Earth-like. It's almost certain that some of those stars will have planets in the habitable zone, and could have evolved life forms, technology, and television sets, and were able to learn of the stealth haze and the Maktar chant of strength. So will the signals be powerful enough to stretch across the vast distances of space and reach another world? so that many generations of aliens can hang their hopes that James Tiberius Kirk never visits their planet with his loose morals, questionably applied prime directive, irresistible charms, and pants aflame with who knows what kind of interstellar STIs? Well, here's the problem. Broadcast towers transmit their signals outward in a sphere, and this falls under the inverse square law. The strength of the signal decreases massively over distance. By the time you've gone a few light years, the signal is almost non-existent. Aliens could build a huge receiver, like the square kilometer array being built right now, but the signals they could receive from Earth would be a billion, billion, billion times weaker. Very hard to pick out from the background radiation of the universe. And by Grabthar's hammer, I assure you, it's only by focusing our transmissions and beaming them straight at another star do we stand a chance of alerting aliens of our presence. Which, like it or not, is something we've done. So, so there's that. We've been broadcasting our existence for hundreds of millions of years. The very presence of oxygen in the atmosphere of the Earth would tell any alien with a good enough telescope there's life there. And we did a whole episode on this, and we'll link that episode in the credits for you. Aliens could tell when we invented fire, when we developed steam technology, and what kind of cars we like to drive, just by looking at our atmosphere. So don't worry about our transmissions, the jig's up. So what do you think? Is it a good idea to alert aliens to our presence? Should we get rid of all that oxygen in our atmosphere and keep a low profile? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. And our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen. We'd like to thank Michael Collins and Jamie Rich, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. Okay. Also, my hands aren't working so much anymore. Yeah, not my problem. <laughs> All right. But you should be aware of this. This uh, steam coming out of my mouth is also indication that it is very cold. It's so all you, CG. It's, it's all CG, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm on a comet right now.